Are you even listening to me? No. (laughs) From Straw Hut Media. This is Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. Hey guys, welcome to Brandy Glenville Unfiltered. I'm in a James sandwich. I'm here with my friend James Mass hey. and my bitter enemy, James Maslow. I love um, how close these names are, by the way. I know. Oh, James Maslow. James Maslow today. I know. You're the star of Big Time Rush. And I don't know if everyone knew this, but we did the first Celebrity Big Brother together. OG episode. Yeah. Season OG. So I think first? it was the best one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. It literally, I feel like. They're lucky they had us. I haven't kept up with the show, nor did I really watch the show beforehand, but I too fully agree it yeah. was the best one. I haven't watched it either, but, <laughs> but I mean, obviously it was the best. What Clearly. was it like living with Brandy? <laughs> she was entertaining, <laughs> I'll give her that. She uh, was entertaining. We were definitely like, I get bored. And you know, I just tell the truth. And Mark and James, well, James was like a beast in the challenges. Like any physical challenge, he was gonna win. So. But wait, on, a, on a regular season, that could have been an additive, right? Versus our season, it wasn't really the best tactic. So I went in there going like, oh. He went in winning then, every single fucking But then I was like, like, oh shit, I can't keep doing this. I've got, yeah. to, <laughs> I've got to really step back. So I was and like, so- guys, let's get James out. James, I want you out. Because I can't. <laughs> you just didn't like that he was winning. You're well, like, yeah, oh, well, I got to bring I him down a peg. Yeah, <laughs> because, well, also him and Mark formed an alliance just against me. <laughs> Did we? <laughs> Is that what happened? It seemed like that. Well, I'm just very honest. And in the game, they were annoying me. So I told them that. And then- But when, in our defense, everybody annoys her. Yeah. So. Well, not, I mean, mm. And she annoys everyone. So yeah, it's kind of a balanced yeah. situation. I was specifically there. trying to annoy James and Mark. I actually stole James' jeans and I wore them the whole day. <laughs> Were you wearing them? I see. I, I, it's not that I blocked it out intentionally, but I really just don't remember <laughs> a lot trauma. of this. Um, you did. You did attempt did. to annoy me, and yeah. I think you succeeded to some degree. But yeah. then I also, I'm not a very dramatic person, and so although I have done some unscripted that things, that pissed her off more. That you I think reacting. that probably did piss her off more because I'm like, look, he was, I'm not trying to be a reality star here. This is not. And I respect the game. It's just yeah. not what interests me. Yeah. So it yeah. kind of got to the point where I was just like, that's adorable, Brandy. No, I'm gonna go do my not, thing. You can happy. go to your. Like, the whole <laughs> that is the worst thing for but someone that's instigating. It's like he, react. He, he did not know. I had them on the whole day, and then finally at the end of the day, I'm cooking. I'm leaning over and getting something out of the oven or putting something away. He goes, Brandy, are are those my jeans? And I go, yeah, because I was joking that I could wear his jeans because he was so thin and like like we were the same size. They were a <laughs> yeah. little big on me, but now big. I'm bigger. And I have to say, give myself a little credit since. Uh, since COVID, actually, I built a home gym and all I did is squats and deadlifts for basically like three I hate years. Legs. I oh love them God. now, though. But the problem is, I got to wear stretchy. Like these are stretchy yeah. slacks. I got legs and I got booty now, and I can't fit any of my jeans anymore. That's gonna feel sure? good. Are that's you, a good are problem. Are you to sure have. you didn't get a BBL? I, I, you know, I did live in Miami, so that's a fair <laughs> that, accusation. Like, everyone has them there. Like. Every single girl has like a booty. You can get it quite easily though. Like if you actually put no, in a people little die bit from of it. Oh, no, not the BBL. Yeah. You can yeah, get yeah. those even easier, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I die from it. If I have to do one squat, I'm dead. No, no, no. But... I meant the surgery itself. Make sure you're on nipple patrol. Right. Yeah. Let's um, encourage the exercise uh, approach here before yeah. we encourage yeah. the surgery approach. Yeah. I just don't like any of it. But you know, doing legs actually burns the most calories out of any muscle because it's the biggest muscles, back and legs. So your then glutes, I only your just- glutes are the biggest muscle in your body. Yeah, yeah. so I just started doing them recently because that's the only time I notice that like, I'll trim down a little bit because it's so much- There's yeah. that, yeah. and it boosts testosterone in your body. And so, Ooh. especially guys who come, mm. and you know, people talk to me about fitness all the time because I do it every day. Yeah. Mm. And they're like, you know, how do I get my upper body bigger? And like, I feel like I've plateaued, but I'm like, are you hitting legs? They say, no, I'm like, that's the key to uh, everything, not just your legs. I didn't really, think I didn't of know that. that. Yeah. But I mean, I always feel like core is the most important so that like my back doesn't go out. Because if but your I, butt if, is also what holds your butt yeah. and your posterior chain, you know, the yeah. back of your yeah, legs is very much hold your back together. I wear ankle weights every day. Is I think all? women have the same requirements, so you're not trying to boost your testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you do need testosterone uh-huh. as well. I, mean, I had my hormone checks, and you need it. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, different balance. But right, I mean, like, look, lifting, putting weight on your body to some degree, not mm. massive amounts, is good for men and women. It's good mm. for Mus- so many reasons. Putting muscle weight on your body, but not like I'm talking about physical weight, like actually lifting right, weights, right, right. which oh, yeah, will yeah. inevitably yeah. In, in but directly not like add to really, muscle. I heard like really heavy ones can be bad for you. Yeah, but I, I think that it pe- people, especially women, I find are so afraid to lift mm. heavy weights. And so they just never touch them, and it's it's okay. You don't need to be you know PRing personal every single day, 
but it is it's okay to it's actually it's good it's good for your bone density it's good for your posture well, exercise for, in general is yeah. great for you which i just I want hate you to start it. working out i keep saying to brandy it's like I so know. now i used to work out because i was very vain and i would freak out i thought my body looked like shit too and i look back at the pictures now and i'm like i want to look that shit because <laughs> that know, was really right? good you just never know i want to be so thin yeah. again that people worry about me yeah, my friend always like i really that. that's my favorite that's thing the most LA like, statement i've heard this week yeah. good on you i mean and i expected it this morning too so i really appreciate you definitely not Living up to it. like in my best shape but, but it is what it is mentally though now my new goal is is that like i just do it because i have to like if i don't work out i notice that my mood is this a workout podcast <laughs> no i think a lot of people work like it's mental health okay but i want to talk okay, to james fine. about his famous okay so life. brand was a bitch on big brother okay. i wasn't a bitch honestly they were and bitches. not just big brother TV. too don't no, you don't pin her into just oh, that yeah, show yeah, right, right, oh right. my god oh my god two james is getting out on it this is exactly what i had to deal with <laughs> but if mark and james had been smarter mm -hmm. i pissed them off so much that they got rid of me when they should have kept me because i couldn't win any challenges <laughs> i wasn't good at the game i told a lot of people Actually, didn't that like is me a bad move on and the so game i was like part. keep I, it till the you, end and i then... was trying i'm like if you guys get i mean like i'm not gonna win i can't win a challenge i'm mediocre at everything people don't like me like <laughs> what are you doing if but, nothing else you're self-aware yeah, yeah, yeah so, but yeah. then they were like i knew i was going so i got all ready and they're like come on you're late i'm like I'm leaving tonight. I'm gonna get ready. But the second I got back to my room, there were, somebody came in like, James just got voted out, and I was so happy. I did like a dance <laughs> uh, because you know, he was gonna win. Like honestly, like if he, I told them, I, I, if you guys don't get James out, he was winning every challenge. Yeah. But the physical challenges are not the most important, especially in the celebrity game, where your average regular Big Brother, you have you know, honestly and objectively, a younger group of people where physicality and being a leader and all of those things can be a massive advantage, right? So I, I kind of say this in jest, if I did a regular season, I think I would have had a much mm -hmm. better chance of winning. But I still think when you're, a, yeah, because when you're, it's a longer, it's a, also such it, it's a It's much longer. longer. Have you and thought like, of doing any of the other challenge shows? Like, have you? I And I don't want to say this, like, look, yeah. I'm so grateful I had that opportunity. Star. But at the same time, some of them are really interesting. people, like Dancing with the Stars and Celebrity Big Brother, the two big unscripted things yeah. I've done. You did it? with the stars yeah season 18 oh was my god finalist, I didn't know fourth. that but I, I had so much fun that? doing it yeah it was a hell of a challenge if you I want to compete really yeah, hard. Oh, you gotta not only train all day long and it's so much longer than they expect you gotta train after hours if you're not like naturally yeah, a I heard I mean, I've heard so it was the most amount of fun I never want to have again but <laughs> it was fun and the same thing with Celebrity Big Brother when people say like why did you do it I'm like why the hell not right what like, a unique opportunity that most people yeah. right. would love to do and would never get so I look yes. at life that way of like, oh, look, I'm not going to say yes to every unscripted yeah. and every challenge I well, get asked yeah, to do. Yeah, but I mean, it is exciting to get out of what you do all the time. It's yeah. so great. And honestly, my favorite part about it With is me? my phone, <laughs> besides you, Brandy, my phone, my computer, you know, I'm on them so frequently. Yeah. And I try and be present and try not to be, but just to right. run things a month yeah. with none that, of that. Nothing. Unreal, it was amazing. It was I incredible. I love it. I've done yeah. a couple of shows like that where they take your phone and computer. And honestly, like even looking at my phone from here stresses me the fuck out. I'm like, no, it's like a forced digital detox and you're working out and you're getting paid to do it. Like you have to do it. It's like if yeah. you're a movie star, you're getting paid for all. I always thought that's so fabulous because <laughs> like you literally have like a certain date that you need to be jacked. Oh my God. We, yeah. we should have Meta on here. Uh, Meta was with us and he escaped. Do you multiple remember times. that? Yeah. He left multiple <laughs> he, times. He got out. Meta he is. went into Sorry. the uh, uh, Meta uh, World Peace. Ron Artest. Sorry. Uh, oh, famous basketball God. player. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well then, I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. But you can still like sports. But I uh, love Meta. And like, he actually was so sweet. He mm. started, he was training my son in basketball after. Oh, no way. No, and he's my, such a sweet he man. He is so sweet. But then my son didn't want to get up early anymore. I'm like, do you fucking realize that <laughs> yeah. Meta World One day, one day he's going to look back and go, exactly shit, I should have like, kept up with that. You were so stupid. I said that. Well, can you, okay, can you imagine this? So think about Big Brother, right? You've got some of these people been operating cameras for how many, 20 seasons, right. 30 seasons, I don't know how many, many, many years. And for many, many years, they've known for a fact they get in at 10 p.m. and through the entire night, they're standing there and they know for a fact, nobody is going to come up to them unprompted because you can't leave. And then Meta, 
just walks out an emergency <laughs> exit. And so I'm just imagining Remember, how- but, You know, he broke out in the diary room. He broke out of that door. But how fucking funny <laughs> must that have been for the poor camera operator- Oh my God, we That's felt, just, you know, three in the morning, just kind of watching, oh just shit, just you know, and just like- <laughs> Oh my God, he's, he's, he's so gorgeous. He's massive. Like he's a huge man. He's like giant, but like, we heard like this kerfluffle and we're all like looking at each other like, what the fuck? And everyone's like, Meta escaped. Yeah, he even and, looks and they never talk about this on the show, by the way, because- No, I don't think they did, No, because it'd be like, it's never want, happened yeah, before. They didn't right. want people to know. I mean, we like you could actually jokes. get out. Yeah, we is started he on making Dancing jokes. Stars at the moment, I is he? Is he? I don't know. It's, well, it's you're not looking at the right yeah, person. Ron Art- look up Ron Artest. Huh. I loved him. Like he was like just so entertaining. It's so nice too. I know you and like he has this like um like everyone like his persona in basketball is he's the bad boy of basketball. I mean, like, he used really to beat bad. the shit out of fans in the stands. If we're being honest, yeah. there's been a couple of moments. Yeah. Having said that, I think he's made some massive you know, life changes and the run we know, yeah. sorry, the, the meta we know, is well, I think just he went back kind. to Ron, I'm not sure, but like when he said meta world piece, it didn't click with me. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was Ron Artest. Cause like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I love the Lakers. I love, you know, basketball, but, and I'm like, I don't, I don't have heard of you. He's like, have you heard of, we're in the hot tub, but non-sexually. One night, and we were just talking. Thanks for clarifying. I was yeah. <laughs> I was picturing something different. So well, when you say I was in the hot tub with someone, it sounds a little weird. Um, and he goes, "Well, have you, you heard of?" Up? You know, I'm not going to take this. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, "Have you heard of Ron Artest?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, the bad boy of basketball." He's like, "That's me." I'm like, "Shut the fuck up!" I was so excited. I'm like, I wanted to call everyone, but we didn't have our phones. Um, yeah, it was. It was. We a, had some really good times. Though. We I did, mean, and truly, tough. a lot of the fun conversation wasn't entertaining enough to be on TV, or it was so inappropriate they couldn't put it on TV. Yeah. Right. and those are my favorite memories. But they did have a twenty-four hour feed that people watch. Which they was, did. Was crazy did anyone to me. hook up in the house, or was it like a? No, there was, was no. It, it wasn't. Was it not that I think that was everyone cu- was kind of up. taken. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was weird. James definitely wanted to hook up with me, but I was like, I don't. Uh, yeah, so it was very awkward because so I kept asking. I met your yeah. wonderful girlfriend, Caitlin, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. are you guys, how long have you been together now? We're coming up on five years. <gasps> wow. It's like, where does the time go? You need yeah. to get a ring. I was saying- I mean, break- it's it's certainly in the cards at this point. You know, I'm right. also at that place in my life at 33, part of why we moved to Nashville. It's like, we do want to start a family down. and You're settle down. Like- at least have a home base. Like my yeah. life is on the road constantly. Right, I was yeah. gonna say, I just heard like you were in a, a jingle ball or something, mm-hmm. something to do with iHeart. You were- you We guys- played a bunch of the Jingle Ball tours. I mean, I brought Big Time Rush back four years ago and we've toured, we played over a hundred shows. So I've just, between that and filming and then other business, I'm on the road at least half the year. Are you rich? I'm doing okay. Um, <laughs> I, no, I mean, it's, it's like, it's all perspective, right? Compared I mean, you to just built a home gym and you have a house in Nashville? I and do. you have one in Miami? He's got boy band money, hello, I know, honey. But I want but some. Look, it's, that's, that's fantastic, mm. you don't know, wrong. I'm extremely grateful for that, but it's, it's because I started investing young. Mm. And I started investing in real estate yeah. and understanding the basics of Very stock market. And yeah. I, I got interested mm. in mm. in other business. And mm. so now I'm very grateful. I live yeah, very yeah, comfortably. Yeah, no, I can course. take care of my friends, my family. And oh, however, we're it's friends, still, right? <laughs> I'm here on my own. Is this not taking care of Brandy? But I, it's I me, did buy you donuts. But oh, I, I, I said that. James will probably not eat Thank a donut. No, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm not supposed to. I'm doing a 75 hard right now, but like I might cheat. Don't tell anybody. She's so oh level headed. And I his know. girlfriend is wonderful. Oh, she's, she's very great. grounded. How she's do you such know? A... Are you stalking her? I actually follow her on social media now. Yeah. Because yeah. we, right? we met. Yeah. 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 And I was saying oh. to Brandy before you got here, I'm like, they're so perfect. It's, it's like, like literally, it's like, like if you could. Oh my gosh, okay. Manufacture a couple of, and like, that's you know. But I think part of it is like, we're not pretending to be anything that we're not. Yeah. Well, no, it's just two people working on themselves at a certain point in their life. It's not like you guys are running around as teenagers or whatever. Yeah. Also, he's Jewish, so it's he's very like, grounded. And let's talk about, yeah, yeah. I, I really do. I, I yeah. really want to date a Jewish guy. Not you, but like, obviously. I and mean, you can lie to yourself yeah. all you want. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really. he's right, it's true. I know, it's I'm not brandy. doing that. I just um, talked about my girlfriend. But yeah, no, I know. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she's great. But you just went to Israel. Tell us about that because that is intense and amazing and wonderful that you did that Thank and you. scary as fuck. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes to all of that. Um, so I went over shortly after October 7th. That's I have friends crazy. over there. Uh, I've been over there multiple times. Um, I have some extended family, but it's mostly friends that I've made over the years. And you know, I think it was on October 8th, I'm texting with my friend Franny and just trying to get an understanding of like, wait, what's going on? I'm seeing crazy stuff on the news. Like, right. what? I don't think a lot of us, I don't think a lot of people still clearly have a picture of what happened and what's happening, but especially yeah. day two, yeah. day, you know. Right. And she was messaging me on WhatsApp saying, I'm in my bunker. Bombs haven't stopped going off. 
for hours. Um, I have one pistol with one magazine and my four kids around me. And my husband is a reserved platoon commander and he was called away and he already left. Because in Israel, like I think doesn't everyone have to go into the military if they live there? Yes, for the uh, most like, part. Yeah, like even women, um, you have to. Yeah, women, I believe it's two years, men are three years, yeah. something like that. But anyways, this what happened, without, we don't have to get into the details of it, was not normal, was not expected, and is simply not okay. Horrible. I mean, you know, and, and the, and so devastating. I wanted to understand what truly happened. So you're I went like, hey, to, oh, you're in the bunker? I'll be right over. Well, my friends called me and said, would you be willing to do this? Would you be willing to come and talk? And like, we need support Are more than scared? ever. you scared? Um, of course I was scared initially. Yeah. And But then upon arriving, it's, man, I felt more safe in Israel, especially being a Jew, than yeah. anywhere else in the world. And the more that anti-Semitism has become the new fad on TikTok. It's And insane. ramped up to this absurd level. Well, I mean, this the, is like, it's like a brand new, like a brand new thing. I don't know what brought it on. It was like Kanye or it's, something, but like, out like it's so bad right now. Well, and so anti-Semitism has been up for many, many well, years. I know, it's like no, but I'm saying it's, it's nothing new. It's, but it's one of those but things. It's hitting that you, you, you like think right now. Twenty four. Yeah. You think like the same way we live in Los Angeles, and it's like, is racism still around? Yeah. Like, of course. But yes. in comparison to where it was yeah. in Los Angeles, none of us think of it that way. Like we've yeah. built a community of inclusivity and a community of respect. Right. And then all of a sudden, in these same communities, oh, that's all fine and good, and of course, but not Jews. And it's like, where did this even that, come from? Yeah, it just, I mean, I mean, yes, it's been around forever, but it really just hit like a high note recently. But you gotta, I mean, one thing to understand is that it doesn't change overnight. All that that did is reveal this curtain that's been hiding it all along. Let's talk about real self-care with one skin. My go-to for skin, and it doesn't just make you look younger, it literally actually acts younger. Thanks to the game-changing OSO1 peptide. I don't know what that is, but it's real good. It's almost like magic, but it's science targeting those aging zombie cells. Ooh, that sounds horrible. Directly to keep my skin looking and feeling fresh, Boom. I've been using one skin across my face, my neck, even my hands. And let me tell you, the difference is night and day. I see less visible lines. I'm like, I have a smoother texture generally. I have some zits right now, but my skin just feels like stronger. I got a thicker skin, haha. -ha. Especially with the seasons changing, one skin has been my skin's best friend. And because I love sharing, sharing is caring, my finds with you, grab 15% off your first order. Just head over to oneskin.co, that's .co, not com, and use my code Brandy. Trust me, your skin will notice the difference. Remember, use my code Brandy, all caps, at oneskin.co, not com, for 15% off and tell them Brandy sent you. Here's to healthier, happier skin with one skin. Anyways, it's... it's <laughs> It's ridiculous to me. One, the most frustrating thing about it is that I truly believe the vast majority of people yelling and screaming this hatred against Zionism and Judaism and all in Israel on social media have no, no idea. idea what they're fucking right, talking exactly. about. And I'm not being mean saying that they're not valid in their opinion. No, no, they're just joining a bandwagon. Have yeah. have some yeah. have some information, have some knowledge behind it, and they don't they know. Don't. I mean, it's like you see all these interviews on the street where they're shouting from the river to the yeah. sea, and you ask them what river, and they don't fucking know. You yeah. ask them what sea, and they don't fucking know. Yeah. And it's like, well, fine. Well, but I, I feel like it's an outlet ignorant. for people's own hatred. Like, I think the world is in a sick place, like just people's state of mind and mental health, and to your point, yeah, they is have then to people after see someone. a cause like that, and or they hear one person and give a certain point of view and they're like, ah, like it's like when, you know, a herd of sheep is running that way and they're like, I don't know, what are we running for? I don't yeah, have no idea, let's it, just it run. It is that yeah. and then it is yeah. compounded exponentially yeah. more because of social media. And yeah. what I mean by that is yeah. that, you know, that became the popular yeah. narrative, the popular trend yeah. and people, especially young people are so yeah. afraid to be ostracized. They're so afraid to be yeah. left out. So they just joined it going, all my friends are, oh, it must and be. And they don't even right. know what, yeah. They, they no don't have no idea. Exactly. Well, especially, it's an outrage especially culture. Especially young people. Yeah. I just feel like, oh my gosh, you're gonna look back and be like- on the wrong side of history. Right, no, Straight exactly. Up. Yeah. And I really just dislike, I'm not a social media, like I have to be on it. It's sure. a necessary evil, but I don't love it. I'm, I'm with you there hundred percent. I mean, I- I'm appreciative I, of what it can do for yeah, business no, and my fans exactly. and all that, but- we need it. I don't I mean, love but I, it's not what social. It, it's what is ironically takes away from social experience, yeah, right? People honestly, are so mad. But I want to know about Israel. Like so mm. when you got there, what did you do? Oh man, I so I was on tour 
Uh, oh, but you guys were singing over there? No, no, no. I had five days off. Oh. And so I went over there. I only had five days. So, you must not drink or do drugs because you no. say, like, I mean, I, I, ha I will drink on occasion. I'm not drinking right now. Right. But truthfully, the busier I get, you just the have older to be clear -headed. I get, the less that I have the time for and less that I want to do it. Yeah. We did drink one um, night, right? After we got out of the house, yeah, I mean, we all look, went out. I, still, I like yeah. tequila here and again. I'll have a good bottle yeah, of wine. No, but we needed to because we only got like yeah. wine once. There's nothing wrong with it in moderation, but let me just say I've done enough of it in my life. Right. That yeah. I don't miss it and I don't crave it right now. Because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do this like as much There's as no you're way. doing. I'm up at five in the morning. I don't go to bed until 10 or 11 because yeah. I'm busy doing things I love. Yeah. And to me, it's like the idea of adding in drinking is only going yeah. to get in the way of me reaching my and goals. And it sucks yeah. the joy out of all those things that you actually He's love. You'll so. have a different yeah. perspective I mean, on oh, those okay. things I that you like doing. I drink enough for both of you guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a balance. There's a balance. I mean, yeah, you guys have me. If um, you ever just yeah. feel like you want to hear somebody <laughs> tipsy, give me a call. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I went, I went, so in five days, I initially went over there like, hey, I'm just going to create some social media content, try and understand, try and ask questions, which I did. But day one, we just had so many, I say we, the friends I was with and the production company I was working with to get the content, had so many amazing, sad, horrific, beautiful, what, combination of, of most extreme of both sides of just Experience, sad and angry like to, oh my God, this community and this country coming together. So much of that on camera, we just said, hey, let's double down. Let's try, try and shoot a documentary. So I haven't spoken about this yet. Oh, wow. But we shot enough footage over five days. I'm going to set a couple hours a night, quite honestly. I mean, because stuff is happening all day. I mean, all well, day, we every try, day, I right? tried, I went off. It's a small enough country. You can go throughout the entire country in basically eight hours from tip to tip. And so we went down to Beharit and Faraza, which are like the two of the the hardest hit kibbutzim. The kibbutz are next to Gaza. I would be I've so been to scared. Gaza Strip before, and I've spoken to Palestinians who come across the border years ago. I've always been interested yeah. in this region. And we went as close as we could. Obviously, the gates were closed there. Then I went into Janine. I went into the West Bank. And I have You're friends nuts. that I... Like, that's it's not crazy. about me. I went no, to support I know, my friends who are fighting you died? over there. Mm -hmm. But, okay, the point is, and then up in the north to understand... Uh, you know, Lebanon and then Hezbollah and the threat that's there and the 100,000 Israelis that but are displaced. But you're not a CNN reporter. That's so scary. Like you just decided to go. I mean, I have like such respect for that, but like I wouldn't do I it. I mean, the emotional toll it will have on you. I mean, obviously they're going through it and you can dip did back you out, but them? that's amazing that you were able this to. This trip, uh, no, I did I did speak. I did okay. go and motivate. I did go to yeah. um, Lonely Soldier organization. I'm not saying it wrong, but basically soldiers that are lone soldiers who don't have friends or family. So they would put them together and cook for them. And I would come in and try and speak and motivate. I went to speak to uh, families of hostage members or families of deceased who grew up oh watching Big Time Rush or I listened to like, fans. I, just, I would just be crying the whole time. I'm um, such a meanie. Oh, I cried more than I've ever cried. And to yeah. be honest, I cry more now than I've ever cried as a byproduct Well, yeah, of it. because but, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's not stopping. I, mean, I, even even I, I guess I want to say, though, yeah. just to wrap this up, yeah. that it's not, it's not that everybody is just like sad or even that I didn't really find angry Israelis. You oh, found no. people that are like, how could this possibly Devastated, happen? Devastated, right. Devastated, but also the resilience mm -hmm. of the community and the resilience. Think about Jews. Jews have been, people have been trying to eradicate Jews for 4,000 years, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so and sadly, it's nothing new. But my only comparison to why this has kept Judaism, Jews, Israelis so tight is think back to 9-11. Think about how many American I was flags in, I you saw. I lived in New York and on the, I lived in an apartment that overlooked the West Side Highway. It was like two miles away. It yeah. was, and then at one point, like they, everyone was calling me from LA. We went to the roof and saw the second plane hit. Wow. And it was horrific. I didn't, I like, I didn't leave my kitchen for but like But do you remember the years. months that followed? <laughs> yes. Where people were nice. Well, my, people were my supportive. Community came together. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was playing a fireman on TV at the time. So he was kind of like, so what we did was we went around to all, like, all the fire stations to talk to the firemen because it was like, it was a very popular show. And like, mm -hmm. we did everything we could do. It was, it was, ah, oh, I can't, it gives you know, me. The so, silver lining, or should I say a byproduct of tragedy is it brings community brings together. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that's, that what that's, the vibe was there? Like, I mean, the vibe has vibe. <laughs> Israel uh, it gets attacked on the daily. You know, this obviously, the idea of rape and kidnapping and beheading civilians and all that, Ugh. not okay, cannot be justified. I don't want to hear a fucking oh blood from anybody's God, me mouth. Either. However, generally speaking, they got a lot of neighbors who want the land. It's nothing new. People have been fighting over this land for a long time. So they're used to, I guess to put it this way, it's like, we, we have one or two instances in our life where we're like, oh my God, such strategy, tragedy has happened, you know, through radical terrorism like 9-11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And then the communities are brought together. And then unfortunately, when nothing bad happens again, you kind of just go back to business right. as usual. And Israel is constantly bonded. Jews are because constantly all, bonded. Yeah, there's always something by happening. By the necessity to stick together, right. the necessity to be resilient. And so there's I mean, a lot of that in the documentary. Like the, I mean, so how, how you have over five days filmed this whole documentary now. Yeah. And do you have uh, a distributor at the moment? Are you, when is that coming out? Is it We're some... still working on the edit. I didn't yeah. do it for we could put it on YouTube. proceeds. Yeah, look, we might just, we might try to get it to on a streamer if it's yeah. good enough so people can see my experience and yeah. have a different perspective. I mean, I think it's important just to show, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, but, all I see on the news is tragedy. Yeah. Sure. I just see and only And there's stories of like uplifting stories, you know? I mean, yeah. I, I, I spoke with a, a Muslim Zaka. So, uh, Zaka in the Jewish religion are the people who clean up the blood out of respect oh. for the dead. And they specifically go to unusual deaths, usually. So that means like a car accident or something mm -hmm. where the Zaka come and take care of it out of respect for the family's dead. People don't have to see a body like that. Yeah. But it's a common thing in Jewish culture that you don't you don't show the dead de the death, dead people, you clean up the blood, you don't yeah. it's very disrespectful to do that. Did you have a um, bris when you were little? Um, I did. Oh, I went to so many and it's oh, yeah. the worst thing. It's like that's terrorism but <laughs> but um sorry I that's got off right. track. but anyways you know then to speak to a by the way 20 percent of israel is muslim yeah so there's apartheid state the things we were throwing around is just ignorant just it, wrong it, it's just it's insane um, to me that we can't just all get can't we all just get along yeah. but it was some some of the stories like speaking to this this gentleman was both just like horrific what his explanation of the thousands of mutilated bodies he had to see but then the beauty of him speaking about his religion of him speaking about Islam, meaning, you know, mm. coming from the word peace mm. and how this doesn't represent his religion. Mm. And so again, yeah. what I was just blown away by was the unity of so many different people who want the same thing, want peace and safety for their family, want love, want mm. respect, believe in a higher power. And that exists in Israel. It's not just Jews. It is not just one, yeah, it's, a very, no. it's a melting pot, you know, of, of so many different people. and. I don't know, it was really uplifting and beautiful on top of all of the obvious. And scary. Yeah. Puts into perspective just everything. I mean, the whole, uh, you know, the communities coming together and then, you know, having a higher power to get you through something like that and the way that they're able to be still even, I mean, I can't even imagine. And when I see social media, I feel I really bad because I news. stop watching, I, I but mean, that's not the answer no. either. It's just that it's so jarring, which is yeah. why, I mean, you being there on the ground or even being able to show footage like that, that's not, you know, from, yeah. I think from not from a news source is great just because, yeah. the news get such a bad rap i don't have any opinion on that but i just think i mean that's great to be able to document like yes. you know, more people should be doing it thank god it's not me i mean right. i'm sorry well, but, but also, it's just i, I get scary. emails yeah. and dms every day from jewish students on campuses oh. who are afraid to wear their star david they're afraid to speak crazy. Hebrew. They're afraid. And so part of what I am adamant about doing moving forward and how I want to use this documentary is going on to college campuses and speaking yeah. and being a voice for unity and a voice for conversation and a voice for facts and history. What I mean by that is, yes, I'll sh I'd like to show the doc. I'd like to talk yeah. about my experience, but then I want to open it up for questions on all sides. As long as you yeah. come to the table. Peacefully. Peacefully, yeah. respectfully and yeah. open-minded, myself included to learn something you may not know and to walk away after the conversation, even with a difference of opinion, but with love and respect. Yeah. And that is just not happening enough in the world yeah. right now. And it doesn't happen ever. If you don't have the same opinion as someone, like I was on a group text yesterday and I'm like, well, I disagree. And they're like, well, you're wrong. I'm like, no, that's my opinion. <laughs> like, I just don't agree with what you're saying, but you, it's your opinion as you do. Right. But a lot of people, you have to, Follow. I don't need to make you have other to people into wrong. Line. Like, exactly. Like not, we're, we're right. all allowed to yeah. have an opinion as long good, as it can be pe peaceful. Yeah, and that's a good point that you don't have to make other people wrong. Yeah. And right. that, standing for something yeah. doesn't mean you're standing against yes. something else. Well, I'm not going to go out of my way to try yeah. and convince them or like make them even seem. I mean, I may be wrong. We don't know. Like, right, you but know, that's your opinion. Yeah. I mean, like, but my friend circle, we have difference of opinion yeah. all the time. Oh, me too. But we and, talk about yeah. it, and guess what? I learn shit. You know, sometimes I realize, oh wait a second, I had no idea of this context or this information, and I'll pivot my opinion often because. Now I have new information. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't I have can't an ego deal. like that. Maybe Me in either. other ways, but I just don't you need to. I think I want to, like, if I'm wrong, no, I would like to know. <laughs> no, like, I, I, I have no yeah. problem yeah. saying yeah. I'm I mean, sorry I'm either. Just... Like, okay, it was wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that's when it's a fact. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But, like, but an opinion is just an opinion. We're all yeah. like, yeah. we're all allowed to have difference of, differences of and opinion. And then when you, you know, then people, that, that could, you know, nothing really is black and white, but man, when you talk about the conflict in the Middle East, the, you the know, line is hundreds drawn. of yeah, years yeah. here at minimum, if not mm -hmm. longer. I mean, thousands of years for, you know, Hebrews and Israelites and Jews. 
But there's so much information, there's so much nuance that even if you're extremely educated, there's a lot you probably don't know. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's not black and white. Yeah. So there's yeah. no yeah. like, we're right, they're wrong. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really exist in this world, maybe for certain things. Yeah. And so again, even though I have a pretty strong opinion of like, well, terrorism's wrong. Yeah. yeah. You know, rape, yeah. wrong. Yeah. That's not a military Murder, tactic. Wrong. Yeah. You know, when I say things like that and I see online, I'm sure after this we're going to see it too, you know, but Israel's been doing mm -hmm. this for years. But, and it's just like, first of all, where are the facts of that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That the IDF is one of the most, it's a first world military that gets more scrutiny mm -hmm. than the rest of the world, any other military there is against a but known they terrorist the, they, force, they, they right? Supposedly so supposedly have the different. strongest military in the world. But we're dealing with different standards here. Yeah, that's We're dealing true. with completely different standards, which is, which is wild to me. You should be a politician. I think you should run for president. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> that you're really good at this though. I and I, I just, I can't wait to see this footage and also just having an opinion and being able to put it out there and, you know, doing something like that. I think it takes balls for well, sure. I'm sure you get enough, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, I mean, especially being yeah, in the yeah, entertainment exactly. business and well, everyone's so self-involved that it's like, oh no my, one really wants oh, to Oh, one of my out. friends, I saw I saw her at, um, I did Thanksgiving Shabbat when I was in Israel. Oh, fun. It was really cool. And I invited an old friend from Birthright. It was the first time I went out to Israel and she's a little firecracker. Hadn't seen her in, I don't know, seven or eight years. And the first thing she says, and she goes, why the fuck are you here? <laughs> this could ruin that's your career. I, you right. know? <laughs> and I said, nice to see you too. Like, uh, you might die. What are you um, doing? Let me, let me say, it's yes, it, it is scary. Yeah. And yeah. I've experienced a lot more. And, and Caitlin too, and people around me, attacks and hate and death threats and all that. But weirdly, that doesn't really bother me because oh it's counteractive with what I'm starting to see now, yeah. which is, I just posted something. Um, oh, yeah. I posted something about, you know, why you should stand against anti-Semitism, right? It was a video oh, yeah. I did. I and that. I saw several comments of people, no, in a good way, yeah. of oh, people good. disagreeing respectfully. People going, hey, wow. I don't think you understand this. Yeah. You know, mm. please look into this, whatever. That doesn't which, generally happen on no, social but media. It's, it's <laughs> starting to, the more I'm encouraging this, the more I'm saying, I don't know everything. But I you're do coming at it in a really good way. Like that, I think that disarming people and having yeah. a conversation, there's an art to it. I mean, and I think that's it's, it's that because so... they have very strong opinions and then they're just like, here it is. Probably your black fans, and white. Though, right? I mean, if they already like you as a musician. Some are, and that's helpful. Right. And some aren't. And look, I don't plan, I don't. I know it's impossible to change everybody's minds. Yeah. And I'm not trying to do that. The people no, who just want to like, yell and scream on either mm. extreme side, but that's not who I'm really going after. Mm. I don't really give a fuck. Because mm. all they're going to do is yell and scream yeah. forever. Mm. But the people that are somewhere in the middle that like kind of have an opinion, but oh my God, I'm willing mm. to learn information, love it. And so I'm starting to see a change, at least within my own people on my social media. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's still a lot of hate and a lot of screaming, but some people are going, I disagree for these reasons. And I'm going, oh my God, thank you. I'm gonna look into that. Thank you, I'll consider your request to make content about, you know, He's Palestinians and the death toll there and all these things that like are Ooh. valid concerns. Yes. So, I would rather him run for president, that's for sure. Oh my God, <laughs> exactly. The, what we have right are now- Are you gonna throw your hat in for- You should. Um, no time soon. I feel um, like no, we need a younger, a, I can't have a, like well, there, there, a there should be an age, yes. there should be a cutoff for politicians. I would like to see James Maslow in the White House. You have standing to be up like there with Caitlyn. Oh my God, under. I can see it now, my gay dream. I need to see <laughs> Caitlyn. Uh, How did you meet Caitlyn? Did you uh, slide into your DMs? We actually met on Raya, believe it or not. Oh. Yeah, we met on an Raya. app. And <laughs> I was kind of at the end of my like, what am I doing What did here? she do? Is she in, in? She was a model for 10 years and she went back to school for holistic health and nutrition. So she's a health coach. Oh, now. oh look, she's look, look at She's a business it. woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's really doing great. And he's yeah. into working out. I mean, they're perfect. Like you well, guys. We balance each other out. Trust me, I need, I need a, the balance in my life because mm. everything I do is a little bit extreme, Perfect. right? And so if I had somebody who wanted to like drink and party <laughs> all the time, that'd inevitably be a larger part of my life and I don't want that. Yeah. So or does she's she such... do a little bit? A little well, yeah, drinking? she drinks. I mean, it's like she doesn't drink, but- I want that for my next relationship. Someone that like has the yin to my yin in like, um, working out and like mental health and we're both just exploring. I mean, I've never really had that. We've always you been just kind want, of, yeah. what? No, you just I think want a boyfriend. you'll find it though. The more you put that yeah. out there. The I'm know, working no, on myself. James. I've been single for like three years now and I haven't even had sex with anyone. Oh, actually, maybe for a year yeah, and a half. That's a lie. So okay, I, I know it's been like a year and a half since I had sex with anyone um, because I'm just true. not try like even when i try to go out there and find someone is i'm just not ready i'd rather dedicate the time Are to you fixing Raya? myself no they rejected me but they i applied years ago <laughs> they and rejected i rejected me too yeah and i could I never think I probably had sex there's no way to like review it. or like yeah no and where's the guy that like i've never seen an office i don't know one person that but, works at raya where are these people that i can yeah. like I get know, a hold I think of that i have sex with somebody that owns it and that's why i'm not right. on it but well, then get like, your friend on it come on yeah exactly he wouldn't even let you on i honestly don't maybe the sex wasn't that good Good, everything but I don't, oh. Oh. 
Oh, she she Big Brother <laughs> season, whatever She's like, it is. Fine, we're getting back Give to what I want to talk about. No, no, it was definitely good. I think I probably ghosted him. Let's talk about making your life easier and about eating better with Factor. By the way, they're so good. These chef crafted dietitian approved meals are ready in just two minutes, giving you the freedom to enjoy more of what you love. Food, duh. With over 35 options, I love the turkey chili every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Keto, and more. Plus, over 60 add ons, your taste buds will never get bored. Say goodbye to meal prep and cleaning with Factor. Ready to eat meals mean no more cooking, just heating and savoring and delicious bites of food designed to any schedule, any meal. Factor lets you choose your meals weekly with the flexibility to pause or reschedule at any time, deliveries whenever you need. Switching to Factor isn't just convenient, it's cost effective offering gourmet flavors a lot less than what you pay for takeout. My DoorDash bill is like five grand, but every meal is packed with nutrition and taste, ensuring you will be well-fed and satisfied. I love them, honestly, and you don't put them in the freezer, they're fresh, but I'm excited. Jumpstart your mealtime revolution, factormeals.com, Brandy50, use my special code Brandy50 to snag 50% off your first order. That's right, 50% off with Brandy50. Factormeals.com, Brandy50. Join me and elevate your eating game with Factor. And I'll tell you the ones I like the best. I like the chicken with the creamy uh, sun-dried tomato sauce. And I like the turkey chili is so good. You don't even know it's turkey. And I like the an another pasta one. And my dogs really like the pork chuck. <laughs> so what about new music? On yeah. to music, tell me. Uh, yeah, so we have to go back to, okay. But whatever. I wanna know. <laughs> All right. Well, for Big Time Rush, we are working on new music slowly. We'll probably, uh, you know, we're gonna work towards an, another EP or an album, most likely. I don't, probably next year. So this year is about writing, creating. Right. Um, are they all, in, how many people are in the band? Four of us. Is everyone in Nashville? No, but as soon as I moved there, uh, one of the bandmates, Carlos and his wife and family just bought a house, which I love. I'm so yeah. excited. And Logan is looking to go there. So I'm ecstatic yeah. because, you know, I don't mean to be negative and say this. I've lived in LA for a long time. I don't love it. I don't miss yeah. it. So the fact that like most of the band is now gonna be based in Nashville is awesome. But Nashville's getting, it's kind of like, um, according to people I know that live there, it's kind of getting like very fancy like LA. It's fantastic. It's man. great that is you're it? all friends after all these years. Are you, I mean, yeah. you wouldn't say on here, but you're friendly with them all? We're very who? friendly. I mean, with look, who? it's like brothers. The other members of the band after that many oh, years. Oh, well, yeah, they have to be friends if they're with And you were the catalyst to pull them back together, right? A couple of years ago. Look, with, I mean, I think it's- oh, you guys broke up? Fair, yeah, we took like an eight year hiatus. Oh, and um, you were acting, I remember. Yeah, focusing mostly just yeah, on yeah. acting and did some of my own music. and He did some acting some in the Big Brother Entrepreneurship. It was actually mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so look, at different times the guys that. wanted to get it back together and I didn't want to or someone else didn't want to and the timing wasn't right. So um, I sat down with our current manager about something else in the end of that conversation went, hey, what if we brought BTR back as a catalyst for everything that all of us want to do? and asked him a few questions like, is there interest in the market? Would you want to manage us? Fastest yes I ever got in my life, which is awesome. <laughs> nice. And then the third one is how do we how do we own it, essentially? So we did figure out a way to license a brand, to build a business on our own. It could have not done well and knock on wood, it has been so yeah, you I mean, I the name back or, you know, the, the name was there. Rush. I mean, yeah. Nickelodeon and Sony yeah. Columbia co-created this. We auditioned into yeah. it initially. Do you know Miley Cyrus? But, uh, I mean, I've met her. All right. Yeah. Just Love checking. Uh, but too. anyways, it was they had basically left it go like dormant. Her. They weren't that interested, and so we revived it and made it our own. Um, and now we're even talking about you know we've thrown out the idea of maybe doing another movie together, bringing some of that stuff. Oh, so. you guys could Amazing. do a musical yeah. movie. Like we one would definitely of have music in it. Like, I like love you, that. you know how Elvis did those things where he would then go, he was acting yeah. and then he would go into music. Mm -hmm. I don't really mm -hmm. like musicals, but I would watch it. Elvis was done you. well. Yeah. Yeah. That movie was done well. Like some of the movies oh, that yeah. aren't like musicals, yes. Yes. right? But like then I mean, he, Rocket like, goes Man into was it. incredible. Yeah. And there's been yeah. Those ones I love. I just yeah, I think you're right. It needs to be done well, or else it just feels like people are taking too long to get to the punchline. I'm like, know, do you need like, to oof. sing that line? Like, but come also on, for us though, like Big Time Rush, the TV show was already music. Right. So it's pretty easy for us to be like, hey, we'll do a movie yeah. and we'll have some songs in it and we'll figure yeah. out a way to make it work. Are so. the other bandmates as attractive as you? 
I mean, no. Okay. Uh, no, obviously, that's, uh, the, that's the James I know. There's no good answer there besides that one. I know. That's um, the James I know. He's I mean, literally we're all, the, all main four one. of us. All no. four of us are very different. And look, also, you can ask the fans that, and right. so and fans are going to disagree, no, which is what's I, great they, about a boy band. No, but you they, got your flavor. You got your yeah. pick. You know, but people does like Kate then get like I know you probably get a lot of DMs and like fans and she's girls. She's so not She's jealous. not the jealous. Type. She's really not. She was indeed. Well, I'm just like, I'm imagining out like I'm. Oh God, it wouldn't work if she was jealous. You know, I'm not saying that like never ever like. But for the most part, no. She's just so confident and comfortable in her own skin. Well, and I mean, I've also, after five years, set a good example. Of like, look, I think I think human nature. We're all going to have our moments of it. Mm. But she's just she's not a jealous person. It's one of my favorite things about her. Yeah, is she doesn't question what I'm doing, where I'm going. Um, wow. But I've also proven to her that, like you're with somebody who is not going to make you question those. Things. And also, I think yeah. that you you have to be held more accountable because if you do something wrong, people are going to. Now yeah, that it's would a different You can't get away yeah. with anything. I'm now. grateful I'm not single. You know, yeah. for yeah. other, other, of course, I love Caitlyn and I'm excited about that. Yeah. But just in general, it's a different time now, and it's kind of a scary thought. The idea of being single, a, I don't have the time, but b, it's like, yeah, there's accountability for everything. And if you've not even done anything, right. it's You're like somebody can make an yeah. accusation that oh, it's just I don't yeah. really. Thank God I, have I don't to deal see with that for them. Things. Are you guys gonna have children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James we, like, we, we want a to. Perfect couple okay, ready great. To so we're already again. trying. When can we expect this we're baby? Not My baby drops this summer. <laughs> they have uh, to get married first. I'm trying to get the dish here. Okay, Wait, so do you still my talk to Mark? <laughs> I mean, not super often, but every once in a while. Very, he hit very me friendly. up one night, real late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't like that. Nope, it wasn't. What are you talking about? I, I wish don't I know. Knew. Uh, I don't think I want to know, actually. No. Okay, so that sounds amazing. Oh, Baby's on the Horizon, new music. I love it. I, I want mean, to see... James, just, I really think you should be a politician. <laughs> I, you know what? I just, I just never wanted to. I know, but... And I, I'm finding that I'm good mm. at speaking, and I appreciate you guys saying yeah. that. And that's why I am doing more motivational but speaking. But you seem like more... you actually do really care. I do care. And our but country I, is fucked. I think that, you know, look, if anything, I am mm. pursuing... What's the term for it? Being a thought leader for my generation. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right way to look at it. But it doesn't mean that I know everything. Like it means Tony that I'm open Robbins. to having conversations and I love yes. learning and I want you to be a part of this yes. too. So I am pursuing doing this more often. He wants you to be I think a part of open it. conversations and learning. I think you would be good to facilitate those kinds of things. Which but is, yeah, I think know. the problem is his like his audience is like young girls and they would probably all go there like ah! Yeah, but he might be able to make it palatable for a new generation of people, like you know, like Ryan getting, would probably rather go. than this like two second little bits on TikTok that everyone seems to get their information from. Right. Not that I'm mad at TikTok; it's all fun and all, but some people seem like to yeah. But like, actually. let's broaden but our, our horizons. Yeah. Like, let's read and it a little to come bit from deeper. Someone good looking. I know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> even you know, <laughs> look, <laughs> there's, there's, there's there's a, more. but you can't say that because you're going to get yourself in trouble for harassment. No, I'm not. I'm not harassing. I no, James, yeah. James knows that we are all just friends, and it's a friendly group. It's if, James you, if you can't harass MB. a little bit on this podcast, well, that, that, that's my podcast. point. But like, you can't. I can't any, anymore. In um, this time, uh, it can't do it. It's so sad. Like everything, all in good fun. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think it, look, words are words, right? I the meaning see a behind of them your is your intention. Let me yes. see. She's probably perfect. If she, oh, actually, like, yes, you should that. see her. Oh, oh she's my god, she's perf. She kind of looks like she's two supermodels living their best life. I don't even know, but she's gorgeous. She looks like Kristen a little bit. Kristen's mm. stunning. Mm -hmm. She's oh, definitely I like a model. Watch. Can I have it? Nope. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Worked real hard for this watch. I bet. Uh, he invested his money really and large. actually. Uh, Thank you. It was the first nice watch I bought myself. Um, I'm not a huge watch guy, but um, I have a few of them that are over. You know, I get them after accomplishments. Like yeah, after no, I, I used to. I need to see a picture, James. I'm looking for. I showed you a picture. I just need to it. see it up close. Here, this is one of James her. James is like, uh, uh, <laughs> you have no, it on your like, phone? That's a little creepy. Yeah, yeah, it's like one of her, her work things that she was doing. But you can zoom in on that photo, at least. Oh, she's stunning. She yeah, looks she's like beautiful. Christy Brinkley, yeah. kind of. Like a young, I mean, obviously. Yeah. No, she's Christy way Brinkley. prettier. Oh, oh my God. But Brittany. she's naturally uh, pretty, too. I said Christy you know? Brinkley. Oh, I didn't say no. Brittany. Oh, OK. I thought you yeah. Yeah. No. She's great. She just flew home. She was with me in LA for a few days, but she flew back. Oh, you guys don't live together? We do. I don't live in LA. I so know. She so, was with me for a few days oh, here and I just see. flew and then back, she went back to um, Nashville yesterday to pick up our doggy and. Oh, um, and so you're doing a shoot have? after little... this. What is it? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you're shooting something at the moment, or yeah. So or... I'm going to do uh, digital content for the rest oh, of nice. today with a company uh, called Fanword. Oh, what that's is that? uh, one of the things I've invested into that I'm working on. It's basically the way that this company has started. It the the terminology they've thrown out there that is hilarious and I love it, but it's an easy way to get it. Is it's only fans for nerds. That's what they would say. What I mean by that is they're 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 creating a, an awesome space and a safe space for fandoms. So they started with Power Rangers fandoms, with Ooh. Peter Pan fandoms. They brought in Holland Roden now for Teen Wolf and 
They Me. should do some oh, anime stuff. Interesting. But it's basically, you know, we're creating really a community and, and giving content and there's video content. Without, and now like, the actual stars that. of these shows and movies, like, yeah. of their so, fandom. Exactly. So it's like a cele- it's, like celebrity, non-porn only fans. Kind of, where you're actually taking care of the fans and listening to the fans. Mm. Like, so many people try and sell something, but they all they do, if you get an email from somebody or most people or a DM or a story, it's like, buy this, buy this, buy this. Mm. And fans mm. sit back and go like, okay, that's cool, but like, we'd rather you give us some value. We also want to be a part of the process. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing with, you know, I have group, I have a group of almost 10,000 oh. super fans that I get to go to and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this you know, merch line or this type of video, what do you guys think about it? And they help me design, they help me pick, they help give inspiration so it's like for the interactive. video content. Very interactive, very supportive. We moderate it so that there's no hate, no negativity yeah. in there. Oh, that's great. And, and so it's, it's a amazing. subscription-based model or is it like Yeah, so a, yeah. there's a subscription-based uh, model being a part of it. We also give free, freebies and giveaways is all it, the time. It's ready now, it's up and running? It's up and running now. So what's it, what, like do a commercial for it. What is it called? Uh, it's FanWord, so you can- FanWord. Yeah, you can check it out. I mean, look it up and you can go and subscribe the, to my video content and what I'm doing with it. And we're starting to launch new merch designed by fans. Oh, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna be tying them into even speaking. You know, I'm gonna be yeah. taking in and creating an opportunity to do like bi-monthly Zooms and talk about specific subjects. Cause yeah. like, like you're mentioning, yeah. there's a lot of things that like kind of scary for people, especially actors, musicians. We're not taught anything about finance. We're not taught anything right. thing about traditional business. And I've been so interested in these worlds for mm-hmm. so long that like my mentors, my the companies I've invested into, I've learned so much yeah. that I have this ability to like take all of this crazy information and turn it into nuggets yeah. to kind of help. So anyways, creating I a lot of that. fun uh, yeah. fun mm-hmm. stuff through there. We're gonna go and we got a bunch of videos to create today and some strategy and design. Wow, so, and so nice. you're one of the owners. I just, so I, I started as a client to come in uh, early on with it and believed in it so much, I just reinvested oh, into it. That's so. nice. I was early, like when Cameo first started, mm. I almost invested. I wish I fucking uh, had, because I didn't. Not to, not to throw shade, I'm on Cameo, but their market cap went down 90% Really? their valuation. I just read an article. And why so is that? Not, Did it... You know, so I just read it yesterday. That's the only reason I have any uh, information on this. It was valued at a billion dollars and the last offer was a hundred million. Oh, wow. And I was talking that about, which is still a lot of money, don't be wrong. I, mm. I mean. I met well, Steve so many early on. Subscription sites but now, a billion maybe. to a hundred million is a big, big difference. Yeah. I'm not saying, he, here's why it makes sense to me. Yeah. I their, their whole business is predicated on people like you and I wanting to continue to do that all the time. Well, I don't, I haven't done them in like four months, And that's months, exactly my months. point. And so it's like fans- It stresses me out. It, do, what it does, and it's also, I'm on set or I'm on tour and I want to do it for fans the, more than- and, Yeah, of course, like, but you get those 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 reminders and it's like- It's a constant thing. And then you look, you're you not always in a, in a place where I can sing a happy birthday a song. Mood. And I can, like, like, oh, be funny. And so I, you've off. seen on there, not just Cameo, all of these platforms, it's a great idea, but it's tough to have a business that is predicated and only sustainable on the celebrity showing up and doing their job all the time. Yeah. Now that we're back, like COVID was a great time for that, but now we're yeah. all back on set and we're back on tour. You're and get, I, Yeah, or yeah. you're not in a good mood. Like so me. I do it more for fans than for the money at this point. I'm grateful I can say that. Yeah. It's still good. I like it. It's great yeah. to have different, you know, streams of income. Yeah. And I really try and do it, but there is a chance that I pivot or, or basically fold into fan where like, yeah. hey, I'm just gonna do this for free at this point, but Ooh. there's gonna be no guarantee oh. as to how many or when or it's gonna be a high ticket price. Yeah. And just really go up to like, hey, I'd rather bring you into like an yeah. hour long coaching session for X amount of money yeah. than me have to do 30, 40, 50 of these videos, which is yeah. no, nobody really wants to do them. I've honest. missed out on like 200 of them because I just wasn't in I've probably missed more than that. I it's mean, like, I feel yeah. bad for the fans Everyone's who like, wanted, yeah. My friends are like, why don't you just, I'm like, cause just I'm not, the price I'm not and happy have and I, every now and I'm then. having like, I'm sick, I'm having like facial deformity and I'm all these things. I'm like, well, I don't wanna do it. you must be able to pause it and then right, allow I did. it again. Look, the thing about increasing price from a business perspective, you're right, right? We can go to that thousand, two thousand. Right. You will get less, it might balance out. But right. the issue is again, I'm doing this because fans love it. Mm. You're now gonna you know alienate the vast majority of your fans you can't afford that high ticket mm-hmm. price. Yeah. And so again, my goal with my business and maybe it's with FanWord is I'll fold it in and I'll do it for very cheap or free or included mm-hmm. as like part of the membership you're gonna get one a year. I don't know, yeah. but I'd rather it's be something like I can Patreon do. Patreon with a little bit, like a little bit, right Ryan? I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I mean, that's a great platform. There's definitely some staunch differences yeah, yeah, yeah. in how we're going about curating the fans, uh, right. really working with them. But yeah, I mean, look, I think any, whenever you decide to sell something, to my perspective in like sales, like, hey, you're gonna create something that you think is of value. Mm-hmm. And if other people agree, then yeah. great. But they're going to agree more when you start asking them, what do you need? What are you missing? What do you like from me? And kind of mm-hmm. co-create it with the fan base. I had, um, 
this Patreon thing. I did a happy hour every Wednesday and I had mm -hmm. this group that was always there and you know, they pay the subscription, but I really did make friends with all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like literally, like I met up with them in New York. We went yeah. out. Of course, I paid for everyone everything. that comes up to Brandy. She ends up chat going out to dinner with her. So <laughs> meh, because ah! like you'll go, well, because she'll stop and they'll be like, oh my god, Brandy, I love you because of this thing and that lady is such a bitch. And she'll go, well, I'll tell you why. And then she'll be like, blah, blah, blah. and then she'll go through like ten seasons worth of stuff I, and like that chat is to them. Not and, true. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm just nice there. to people. Yeah, I know it's really sweet. I mean, you literally like you'll treat everybody the exact same, well, even because if it's some we're stranger all coming equal. up on this. No, I know. I'm yeah, just she saying, can't be rude to just one person. She can't be rude to everybody. So. But you don't give the entire backstory of 10 years of this I, is why. I really and didn't. I, uh, <laughs> so I think you're exaggerating. I think it's, it's not what I it's do. It's just what I take a step outside. Right. And I'm well, like, oh, God, right. she's like walking a really fancy dog. You know, <laughs> like they, they, everyone wants to stop and pat are it. You, and are you so like, I like literally that, I like comparing me to a fucking dog? No, my beautiful Alaskan Malibu. People love dogs. People love dogs more than yeah. people in yeah. LA. So I don't want to be compared to a fucking dog. Okay, so you won't, you may do another reality show. We don't know, but you have new music. And what? you're going to be touring, and you have a gym in Nashville. And you yeah, would do the big Rillers challenge, like the ones how he goes, uh, like something interesting and fun that would be. Oh, that's so like Bear like Grylls. Really, yeah. So I have, yeah. I have a slate yeah. of projects that I'm creating and producing. Yeah. Uh, and on there, there's a couple of unscripted ones, Ooh. which are things that I think would be fun. And right, they're not sold, they're not done yet. So it's like, I hate throwing things that I'm gonna see forever. What do you do in the show? Mm. You don't know yet, but there are things that are interest to me. One of them is with education, going back to schools, taking them over, pitting students against teachers and like having a challenge where it's a, oh. making making learning fun again, but like yeah. doing it in a cool way and the celebrity aspect and all this. Yeah. And one of them is about real estate and renovations. Cause I just well, keep yeah, doing that stuff. Well, yeah, those shows are so popular as well. Yeah, and it's, it's very much in my world. Like I'm selling my house here in Venice. I'm gonna 1031 it into a place in Nashville. I'm renovating one in Coral Gables. And it's like, I keep learning on the job. I'm far from a pro here. I but still like, rent, but. You know, hey, that's <laughs> that, there's there's some, uh, some yeah, great aspects of renting. Like, I mean, yes. is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, we'll put a microphone in there, call it a podcast studio. Well, it, yeah. we did, like we did you, the podcast there for a long time. Well, then you should write I mean, that no up. You can write off a Yeah, no, I do have an office there too that I do a lot of work in, so. If you're listening that. IRS, it yeah, is totally a home office. Yeah, there's a lot of business there. I know, I do, like that's where I do most of my work. And then we have this stupid studio. I'm kidding, I like it. It's a good space though. Yeah, it's really cute. I just. The lighting, because of these lights, I'm not super excited about it. I want it's to natural lighting, you need to control yeah, the lighting. Yeah, because that's not very cute, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah but yeah, Ryan mad. really likes the windows. All right. And <laughs> we're gonna have to cover them. That's just how I feel. Okay. Well, James, Marissa says hi, by the way. I was texting oh, her this morning. She's so bad, she's great. Um, I feel like we need to like redo our group chat. Like just say hi to that everyone. That would be fun, yeah. Not, I don't know how to find that. We should, you know, we'll take a, a selfie and send it in the group like, chat today. Yes, hey do it. Mm -hmm. That would be yeah, cute. Yeah. Yes, and even though I can't find it. How do you find it? We'll find it. I swear the, the phone, like the people that I speak to the most, I'll search them, never show up. Yeah, I, get, I get that all the time. <laughs> Why like, you don't write an email and you're like, I've emailed this person five times uh -huh. this week. Where right. are My business you? manager, yeah. I swear, the yeah. name doesn't pop up my emails. Yeah. Right. I'm like, at least three times a week. It's I'll crazy. get that sometimes the phone number will come up without their name, and I'm like, I've saved this number. Mm -hmm. I've known them for six or years. Usually, it's but, the people uh, that you call the most are at the top. But every thing. once in a while, my phones like, just get too overloaded. Or something. And there's yeah, a yeah. new update that I'm not going to do. Keeps on saying, "Well, it. take that Apple. We're not doing the <laughs> damn update." They're like, "We have a market cap of three trillion. We don't fucking care." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck off, Apple. Um, this is fun. Yes, it was. And so, yeah. tell everyone like where they can find you on your new not only fans. What's it called? <laughs> Fan word. Fan word. Just, everything That's is on my social media go to my link tree so just at james maslow on instagram is where I, i'm most active and then at yeah. james maslow from youtube facebook do you, do you say Twitter or X, or do you go X, X, I say Twitter. 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 Like, Twitter. Like, Have no fun changing that. Yeah, Everyone's gonna say Twitter for the next for the 20 years. It's just years. elongated yeah. the name now I it's know. X. I know. Yes. Twitter. Yes. I exactly. don't, like that makes me crazy. I still say Twitter, because X It's kind always of, gonna be Twitter. Because you can't like, X, you can tweet. There was another <laughs> company <laughs> that had changed its name that wrote like, I forget which company it was that wrote like a funny on Twitter going, yeah, have fun with that. Like changing your name, we're still known as blah. And we were, you know. it's like, you know. It's gonna happen. It's been around for too long. Puffy, then he went by, you know, all the different names. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. It's like PG. Yeah, it's confusing. All right. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, thank you for being here, James. We love Pleasure. you. I don't think I could fit his hands. I would say we trade, but I'm Let's laughing. try. No. I know, these ones are pretty tight, too. They're stretchy. You might be able to, but we're not oh going to find God, out today. Oh, my God, he just called me fat. <laughs> all right, uh, on that note, we'll be back. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, um, bitch. You love James. 
I love James. James Maslow. Can I tell you, I used to, you know, when you're little. What you used to do? <laughs> no, like you would Google yourself to see what came up. And it was always James Maslow. Oh, no, like, instead to, like, of me, I used to be pissed about it. Do like, something about- to his posters. No. That's what it sounded Although, like. Although when I used to be back in Australia and I was writing songs and pitching them, like we would always get the brief big time rush. They're going to be a huge thing. Yada, yada, yada. I ended up getting a gold record, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. For another artist that I wrote a song for. Is this for. about you? Okay, okay, sorry, James Maslow. Sorry. Um, yeah, <laughs> he he's dreamy. He, he is, yeah, he's coming on. We are bitter enemies, and oh, we were. Now, this is <laughs> <laughs> not really, but you, you live in a teeny tiny house with a bunch of people. You're going to have enemies. Yeah, but I think you guys buried the hatchet. Oh, I, but I didn't yeah. really have any. And no. like, at the end he's of it, it's sport. just a game. Yes. You know, but like, there are certain games where you want people to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Your point was great. Oh. He should have kept you right till the end because he could have gotten rid of you easily at the end because oh, you have exactly. no skill. <laughs> no skill hey, you and guys no are friends. Smart. So you oh. would have been able to be booted at the end. He should have saved that trump card oh, for the end. I mean, I was like, I was trying yeah. to tell them that. Yeah. But listen. You get it. I, I do. Yeah. I understand how this whole thing works. Yeah. But right. I, I think James is like, he's so put together. You're I'm eating like, that donut while we're chatting. <laughs> I can hear you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you finger banged the other donuts and then you nibbled on them. Let's I can't fight. eat them. Let's not fight. Let's go out on a high note. Thank you to everyone still listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so we're going to... Um, no, we love I James. I love unfiltered and, and I love brandy and I love everything and I love about donuts. this show. And we I have love the donuts, best time donuts, and blah, 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 blah. Twist. Now we're going to do a recap of Housewife, so you better fucking watch or else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Life of a housewife. Life of a housewife. <laughs> Money, fame, that's, that's the game. game. Um, gotta go. Bye, bitches. Bye. Thanks for listening to Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. Download new episodes every week, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And be sure to leave us a rating and review. And while you're at it, check out some of the other great shows available on Straw Hut Media.